Hey guys, I'm taking a shit right now, but I thought I'd like share a couple moments with you. I want to talk about game theory. It's sort of inspired by other stuff that's going on in the news, but you're gonna go. And I'm gonna be taking this. Um, my exposure to it comes through a philosophy course on philosophical hermeneutics, and um, it's from. Hans George Gadamer, and I think he took a lot of his, you know, some of his, um, you know, foundation from Heidegger, Martin Heidegger. <clears throat> anyway, um, so what goes on here is what is game theory? Well, game theory goes that, what's a game? Well, a game is a series of rules. And, um, and if you think about it, if there, if there are no rules, then it's not a game. I mean, when we say a game, that we're having a game, it means there are rules. And in fact, if it weren't for those rules, we wouldn't have a game. So, what happens is, is that um, when players are playing a game, according to like the philosophers, what's actually happening is that the game is playing them because the players are only going through the motions that are prescribed by the rules. And it's those rules that lend the framework and the challenge of the game to give the players something to do, something to compete with, something to excel towards goals, you know, ways to excel, you know, reasons for motion, you know, you know, a structure for competition. And without those rules, there's no game. And that's why we don't, you know, we tend to talk about how we don't like cheaters or people who break the rules because if they break the rules, then they didn't win according to the game. So they sort of like, you know, they, they nullify the game. And this is when it gets sort of interesting is because, um, let me tell you, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I was reading through Wikipedia once about various things. And so that's already a suspect, but they, you know, I happen to read this story about um, about Egyptians and their mythology because I was interested in, like, you know, symbology and stuff like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, I forgot the flush. Sit here. All right. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm trying to say that. <clears throat> You know, there's this story that went on about these, these, um, it's like, you know, two of the major gods that they had in Egypt, and they were having a contest to see who would be the king of everything, of the, like, you know, the gods in Egypt and all that. <clears throat> so you have to understand, I'm reading this on Wikipedia with no real background on, on Egyptian mythology from some people who are reading it from somewhere else, who basically got it from a bunch of hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics from a culture that no one alive knows anything about. <laughs> So take it with a grain of salt. But anyway, what it says is that these two idiot gods decided that they were going to have a competition to see who was going to be king, and so they had several challenges. And one of the more, well, one of the less graphic of these challenges was um, <clears throat> they were going to have a boat race on the Nile, you know, the Nile, uh -huh. very big thing in Egypt. And, and so anyway, like, the idea was, though, that these, you know, and this was suggested by, you know, our protagonist, as it were, that these boats would have to be made of brick. So the bad god, as it were, our dark-haired god, you know, the black hat god, he actually made a boat out of bricks and put it in the water and it, it didn't really get very far. Whereas our hero, the white hat god, he made a boat out of wood and then painted bricks on it and then he hopped in and he won the race. And so he became king and everyone applauded him, I, but it wasn't clear because you see he won, but he also broke the rules. So he was dishonorable. And yet there's somehow there was something good about this dishonorability, somehow that we weren't trapped within the cage of the rules. We were able to see outside the box as it were, and to see outside of these you know artificial limits and actually do, you know, create a, you know, capture a result that wasn't in the rules that we wanted anyway. 
I want to put this on another pause here and do another little sub branch and ask why in the world would anybody ever want to win without following the rules? And you're going to say, well, gosh, David, you're just so square. And I'm saying, no, what I'm actually asking you is that if we're going to make rules and then we're going to break those rules and then we're going to compliment people for having broken those rules because we realize they were artificial to begin with, then how can you possibly hold me over here accountable for anything? So I just want to know, it's like, okay, so... Either we have rules or we don't have rules. Or at the very least, we're saying that like if we're going to violate the rules, then we have to acknowledge that we haven't figured out the ultimate game. Because if the rules we're playing by, if by following those rules we weren't going to get what we wanted, then why did we ever suggest the game in the first place? To fool someone else? Because it seems to me that if you're going to use certain ethics from this story as it was presented to me, which I guess I can't really say is, enough, you know, almost necessarily from the Egyptians, though they say it was, but I'm just using the story as an example of like certain prevalent attitudes we have today. If we're going to like, you know, say that like, you know, no, be honest and be good and that's what's right, but then we're going to turn around and we're going to reward those who aren't and say, at least you didn't fall for that shit. Then, you know, we can't possibly say we're an ethical people. And if we can't say we're an ethical people, then you can't hold me accountable for anything that I do or say that whatever I do is right or wrong. Or even say it if I go up to heaven and see, P you know, St. Peter, that he's going to be able to judge me like he's judged the rest of you because I would have these questions for him. And for the love of God, I have no idea how he would answer them. I frankly think that he just would, would avoid the whole thing like you guys do today and just not answer your calls and texts and just not show up at the podium when you arrive at the pearly gates and just say, oh, I'm at lunch right now, I'll be back later, and then never come back. That's what I think St. Peter would do. <clears throat> so anyway, I just want to say that, you know, it's like, okay, so you're going to have rules, and we need those rules because without those rules, the game can't be played. But then, willy-nilly, you're going to pick times to not carry through those rules for certain people that you don't like or for certain entities that you happen not to like at a certain time and not respect their individuality, but then expect them to accord you the same respect later. You know, so, you know, you don't even expect, like, because I disrespected you, now I, I assume you're going to disrespect me back. But no, no, I disrespect you, and I expect to be respected back. I'm afraid that you see that once again. That sort of violates the rules of respect. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is, is that clearly uh, what this all points to to me is that we haven't actually figured out what game we want to play. Because there's all a game, there are all these rules, right? I mean, after all, we're all going to, like, we all starve if we don't eat, right? 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 Well, wait, no, I've heard of some people who don't. I've heard of these mystics. Suppose we can live off prana or something, and if they never move, they'll stay alive without any food. Hard to imagine. I mean, yeah, I mean, especially if you don't really want to do anything anymore. I mean, I guess by that point, sex isn't a big deal anymore. And, you know, you can't, you know, you don't really want to go out there and play basketball with the kids anymore because you're way, way above all that shit now. I wonder how they serve. I guess they don't even have any economic accountability because they can't be starved to death. So I guess they just sit under a tree somewhere for the rest of time in India. Well, that's great. So you see, you don't need food either. Then I guess, like, you know, we all have to die. But wait a minute. Do we all have to die? Could they make some sort of a breakthrough to, to just, you know, make so we don't have to die? Or... Or is it just the fact that everyone tells us that we have to die every day and we have to live with each other every day, stuck with each other every day? Maybe that's why we die, just to get fucking away from each other. And if we were all by ourselves, we'd be immortal. Imagine. Because, you know, if you were all by yourself and you weren't surrounded by all these, you know, whatever is everywhere, all these other people who are your brothers and sisters... You would never know that you were going to die. You would think you were going to live forever. Because what would tell you different? You'd just be by yourself. Every day is another day. You don't really notice you're getting older. There's no mirror. There's no like, concept of getting older. Every day is just another day. Just like every other animal. And there you go along, being yourself. And then one day you just weren't anymore. But as far as you never knew you were going to die, no, the knowledge that you're going to die gets to come from all these other people. <sighs> 
Because as far as you know by yourself, you would never know you were going to die. You would never even think about death. It'd be like, imagine how much free your life would be. But the first thing they tell you is how you're going to die. You ever wonder about that? Do you ever really think critically about that? Hmm, am I going to die? Uh, there's nothing here to tell you. I don't have like a gauge here that says, oh, well, I got a few more years left. Uh, no. No, that's the shit they tell you. That's the first thing they tell you. You should think about that and think about the game.